Welcome to Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Vay Nur Chuck. And this, my friends, is the Thunder Show, aka the internet's most passionate wine program. And as you can see, we're breaking the mold as 2011, oh no, 10, it's 2010. I'm getting ahead of myself. 2010, um, wow, uh, it is the year of like, especially in the second half of the year, lack of guests. But we, we're going with a guest today, and we're also going with beer. So this is not Beer Library TV, but for today it will be. Um, Michael, why don't you tell the uh, Vayner Nation who you are and how you got here today? I'm Schneider Mike. Uh, well, that's what I'm known on Twitter. I'm Mike Schneider. Um, Do you feel like you've now become Schneider Mike? I have become Schneider Mike, and yeah. it's because of you. You know that, right? No, I don't know that. Yeah, uh, South by Southwest 2009, I got up and asked you a question about, like, all the various interests that I have and what I should focus on. And mm, you, you had said not to focus on any of them, but you, you did tell me to, uh, <laughs> you said, you, it was, you said something about plastic cups. Mm -hmm. Plastic cups, you're like, I could, you know, I can, I can get on a riff, somebody can put something in my way and they can be plastic cups and you can go on like on a three week tangent about plastic cups. But anyway, that's not how I got here. <laughs> it's just a funny story about uh, <laughs> You're just about telling us. random stories. Random stories, yeah. So, um, no, but we, we had a conversation after that about personal branding mm -hmm. and, I, and, and I just asked you if I should, you know, be Schneider Mike everywhere and you said, yeah, be Schneider Mike everywhere. That's Make it consistent. So I made it consistent. Because there's only one Schneider Mike. But there's a lot of Mike Schneiders out there. Like the Tony Hawk of fingerboarding is named Mike Schneider, and I can't own him in SEO. No, man. he's got he, me. He's got you. That's the great advantage of Vayner Chuck. You know, it seemed like a disadvantage, Mott, but it's a huge advantage in this new world where everybody's out there. So, okay. And so, what about beer? Well, beer. Okay. So, I mean, for as long as I can remember, I've been I've been a beer guy. Like as a kid, my dad would give me sips of his beer, and uh, I would try like everything. He would drink Natty genuine. Ice and Guinea Ice. And... Oh, it was Genesee Cream Ale and oh, Valentine that was awesome. Ale. With the, with and... the Bumblebee, one of the best logos of all time. It was a good one. But and the... so Valentine's and Schaefer and Schlitz. Black Lay label. How about Did you Black Lay? La <laughs> I never even heard of it. My, my, you know, how about Knickerbocker? You guys have that up in Massachusetts. But I grew up in Cleveland. Oh, that's right. So, no, so right. I didn't have that. We had Blatt's. Blatt's was like drinking a battery. How about battery. Jim Brown's? It was like they drinking a battery. Brown? Have you ever drank a battery? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Don't forget who you're talking to. Yeah, um, so you would know. Okay, so beer is a passion of yours? Beer is a passion of mine, and I started a, I started my own little beer site called BeltingMonkey.com. Mott. Is... <laughs> he knows. He knows what to do. He knows more than any of us. <laughs> So it's a, um, you know, it's, it's a little beer site. It's kind of a lab. I, I do a lot of it, beer experimentation, but it's kind of like a journey because, you know, I decided at one point, like, you know, as growing up as a kid and drinking all this just rock gut stuff, but going to the, going to the liquor store with my dad and the beer stores with my dad, I would notice that there was all these other beers that he wasn't drinking. You're like, was, dad, why aren't you buying that? Yeah, why don't you get that? Why and then he like drill that? you and say, cause that's overpriced bull crap. Pretty much. Yeah. He, he liked what he liked, you know? Right. He wasn't really interested in, in trying the other stuff. But then when I got to college, I was able to try a few other things. So I got like into Moosehead and Miller Genuine Draft. Moosehead. And I thought those were like the You were top it. shelf at it. <laughs> I know. <laughs> then one day, a guy brought Sam Adams out. Samuel Adams, all right? Yep. So that's when I really discovered that, you know, there was something more to beer. Because it was, it was more full-bodied, more full-flavored. And it just, there was a little something about and how, it. And how often do you drink beer? Uh, I drink beer every day. Yeah. Um, I have at least one a day. Yep. Uh, and I've. What is your standard beer? My standard beer? Mm -hmm. So I like IPAs mm -hmm. a lot, India Pale Ales. And um, I guess the one that I've been. Sierra Nevada? That's a, that's a pale ale. Right, excuse me, you're right. Um, yeah. I like. I really like Bear Republic Racer 5 a lot. I've so that is like that. that is like your stand like that's your standard, like that's the beer that there's the most bottles in your fridge at right all times? Right now. Yes. But so you don't have a standard beer. It's hard for me to have a standard beer. It's funny. I'm so interested. No, no, in all I think these that's, beers. A, that's a great, interesting little thing. It's funny I asked you that question. I'm now rewinding in my mind. I'm like, huh? I never ask a wine person their standard wine because nobody really who's into wine has a standard wine. I don't have a standard wine. I'll have the wine of the moment. I might take a case home of like a Godeo or or a Riesling what this time of year, um, or a Gruner, and that would become like the standard wine for you know two weeks, three weeks. But beer. For some reason, a lot of the beer collectors and beer, you know, aficionados I know do have that one standard beer that they buy, like always have a case of. And I find that interesting that I asked you that. Though when I think about it, they really shouldn't. They should really go the, you know, if you're looking for the journey, they should really go the path of what you're doing. Yeah, and it's it's this whole idea of I want to have it there because I want. 
the people to, I, it's one of my gold standards, okay? So like in terms of IPA, I really love what Avery Brewing Company is doing, what Great Divide Brewing Company is doing. We brought some Great Divide today to try. Um, and what Bear Republic's doing, what Russian River is doing. But it's, you know, in people terms of... Russian River. Oh my God. Such a big wine area. Finally, laugh. finally got to try Pliny the Elder, which is just this big IPA that's legendary. Yep. And you can't get it. You can get it in Philly, but you can't get it on the East Coast for mm -hmm. the most part because they don't need to distribute it. Mm -hmm. they, they make a lot of it and they sell it like right then and there. Mm -hmm. You go... And so did you like it or do you feel like you forced yourself to like it more because it was so hard to get, which is such a wine thing? I, I didn't force myself to like it. In fact, I, I compared it to you know, my favorite double IPA, which is Avery Maharaja. And I, I, you know, I, so I, I was, you know, I had that in my mind when I was drinking it, and I thought it was every bit as good or better. In fact, it was interesting because it had a different body to it than some of the other beers I've had. The hops came later, which, with with the, the finish, with an IPA, you expect to just be blasted with hops, and it comes down, and then it comes back at the end. A pale ale is just like hops, 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 right? But it, the the Russian River, it hit you here, came back, and then oh, it just came. It was like a like a half pipe, mm -hmm. you know, a little half pipe mm -hmm. action. Yeah, back to Mike Schneider, the fingerboarder. Mm -hmm. Let's bring it back. I like that segue. How about how about Matt Hoffman? You know who that is? The BMX dude? There was an awesome 30 for 30 on the ESPN documentary about him. He was unbelievable, Ma. You have to watch this. Like, I'm not into the bike sports or any of the extreme X Games stuff, but this guy is pretty legit. I love the X Games. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look this guy up. Yeah, Hoffman is like a legend. He like he was like the dominant player for like 10 years. And like the sport was dead. BMX was dead and like freestyling. And he like single-handedly kept it alive segueing it to the X Games, which took it to the next level. So this is the Jeremy McGrath of yeah, BMX, because yeah, that's, that's yeah. the motorcycle yeah, version of Matt absolutely. Hoffman. Okay. Yeah. So right. anyway, these beers, we're going to taste them. We are going to taste them. So so one of your common themes is palate expansion, right? Yes, so absolutely. today I wanted to expand your palate, so I brought okay. a couple of, um, uh, this actually goes back to like a, it's not an argument that we had, a discussion we had about. Probably an it, argument. Basically, yeah, it was, it was an argument. Was this at the Boston Wine Expo? It was. It was about terroir, mm -hmm. right? So you were talking about how wine's the most romantic of all yes, beverages. And, absolutely. And the, the environment is so essential in, in, yes. in how the wine comes out. Yep. And I was arguing that beer has some of those characteristics. Beer definitely too. does. What I was arguing that you may have forgotten, but you could see how quickly I jumped on Boston Wine Expo. In a world where I have 8 billion things going on, you could see I was very untuned and ready to go for this one, was that... The wine itself, evo my big point. I love it, you, man. Thanks, bro. The wines themselves evolve so much in bottle. Mm -hmm. And to me, that is more, and beers do it. Mm -hmm. Beers do evolve in bottle if you keep them. But to me, not to the scale that wine does, and, you know, scotch and bourbon, you know, once you have Laphroaig, you know, you kind of have it. You, you know, it can, it can move a little bit, but like 2005, Chateau Lafitte, there are literally. 2,500 variations of that style about to happen over the next 100 years. I mean, just like enormous, enormous lifts and shifts. Ooh, lifts and shifts, Ma. Mark that down, it could be a t-shirt. You know, enormous amounts of lifts and shifts I along the, the way with one. the web. Done. Right. Um, so that that was my big thesis there, but you're probably not paying attention. I, You know what, I wasn't. I was, <laughs> I was too busy just... I was enamored, you know. I was like, I'm with Gary Vaynerchuk, and he's talking to me about please, wine. So, please. all right. So, <laughs> so, so I, I agree with you, mm -hmm. but because I think it's we haven't gotten to that place with beer yet. It hasn't evolved to that point yet. Like double IPAs were just invented like in 1990 by Rogue Brewery. So, so we're like in a place right now where how's Rogue doing these days? That was like the legendary stuff back in the day when I first got into legend. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they made some. Do they still do the Grateful Dead one? I don't know about the Grateful. Dead. Do you know Dead, what I'm talking they, about? No. Back in the day, I don't know if they still make this, they made basically a Grateful Dead, I don't know, what. I don't think they called it Grateful Dead, but it was something like Fraithful Dead. I mean, it was like one of those yeah, things, they, they like they didn't pay the licensing. Yeah, you know, um, I just don't know if they still make that beer. That used to be the big, you know, people used to come in and like you could tell that they were buying it and they were going home and smoking weed and drinking it. I mean, there was money in the bank and it's like a 15 year old, like, oh, they're smoking weed. You know, that kind of thing. They buy, like, papers. We used to sell easy... We used to sell papers in store. Like, <laughs> we really sold, what, like, easy riders? Easy well, yeah, I mean, like, literally, like... Shoppers <laughs> Discount Liquors was a different scene than the wine <laughs> lib. Let me just say that for the record. So, yes, I, see I, any down I will say... I will also say... Yeah, I've eliminated lotto, cigarettes. I've, I've changed it. I, I know, I'm a jerk. Um, We need to go back to our ghetto roots. I, I think that beer is massively underrated as a serious beverage in the in this country. I do think that there are more beer and food pairings than are out there. 
talk about some of the finer restaurants are finally going there. Mm -hmm. I do think that we have a crappy beer culture for premium beer, as we did with wine and still do to some degree. Mm -hmm. It's a very young food and wine. We're a very young culture, America, period. I mean, we're just a baby country, and I think the Epicurean kind of cuisine stuff takes a long time to get there, mm -hmm. and I think that I think that there is a massive play. I, I am blown away that somebody hasn't really taken it by the neck, and you know, there's a lot of good beer video blogs out there. There's a lot of beer video blog sites oh, yeah. that have launched and have tried to do the wine library TV thing. I'm a little surprised that there is not the clear cut version of me in the beer world yet. It's not me, that's for sure. I mean, like I said, mine's a lab. Like, I'm trying a bunch of different yeah, stuff. Yeah, you're I'm not going to find that route. Voice. I mean, I'm talking about somebody really doing it this way 30 right. minutes, hardcore. You know, you know, we're almost at 900 episodes here. I know. You're... So, you know, you know, we're, we're serious. Totally serious. You know, so. Um, this is serious. This is serious. I'm on a, finally, I'm on a serious show. This is a serious show. I've been on Freezer Burns. That was the closest I've been. Freezer Burns. We had him on here. Yeah, he was here. I feel like I have like I feel like a coach that has a tree of like all these people that have done shows because of me. I feel like, you know, like Bill Walsh. You know, like the, if you look at all the coaches <laughs> that are in the NFL, they all kind of go back. You need to tell me to step up my game, coach. Yeah, I feel like that. Yeah, why don't you do that? No, I'm not going to do that to you. <laughs> what we're going to do is you're going to step up and teach me some of these beers because I've never had any of them. And so I'm excited. Let's go through them. Should, what order are we drinking them in? Well, first, I appreciate that you taught me a little bit about Rogue. We're going to drink. We're going to drink the. Yeah, like we're going to drink the two stouts first. Now, okay. What, so one of the things about you know beer Come is on, that we're. Can you do me a huge favor? I'm sorry. Can you can you get us another glass of each like this? I want to taste the stouts. So, side like by that side. side by side. That's brilliant. There's one. You might have to go out. That's yeah. Brilliant. We're gonna yeah. drink in wine glasses today, but that's okay. You want me to? Do you want me to no, set no. This I want to show them where Mont's going. Okay. And they like when the camera travels. Jesus. Where's Mont? There's Mont. He's going. He's hiding behind the all the styrofoam and stuff came in. Oh, there's Justin. It's his anniversary. Justin, come in here for a sec. Let's. You know. I just want to wish you a happy anniversary. Your Thank seventh you. anniversary is today. Thanks. Happy and, anniversary. Oh. Thanks. Schneider Mike wants to... Thanks, man. Justin, great to meet you, and happy anniversary. Thanks. It's been 12 wonderful years, seven married, seven-year anniversary today with my beautiful, beautiful wife. I love you, Liz. Very nice. Mott, still searching, confused. Mott has no shot. There's no clean ones. I'll go get a Mott. You keep talking to Schneider Mike. You fix right, this, because I'm, like, banging the crap. All right, I'm gonna, we're going we're gonna to see if I need clean glasses. All right, fine. If not, it's fine. I'm coming. So, these are all dirty. Yep. Might not be dirty. Nah, they look dirty. Mm, okay, fine. I'll I'll let you get away with that. This is my shot to be on the show. I'm not missing out. If I sit in there. All right, Mott. Microwave. Oh, that's right. Microwave. Yeah. Okay. 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 All right, no. I don't know what anything is, so I feel like I'm in a big disadvantage here. But I'll tell. I'll be fine. Watch this. Just do plastic hey, cups. We already talked plastic. Yeah. Cups. Where are the clean glasses? There aren't. I have an idea. I'm sorry, what did you say, Kristen? No, no, there probably hey, aren't. Yeah. That's Brian Delatore. Oh. I want to show everybody one of my favorite employees, Brian Delatore. So one of my favorite guys ever. How are you? See? <laughs> Everett, we, Everett is, a, is a veteran of the show, but they may not recognize him because he trimmed his he beard. Is, he's nice and trimmed. <laughs> Ian, who not, nobody likes. <laughs> Jason Stratton. <laughs> right, Jason Stratton. All right. Yeah. Let's, That's can you do me a favor? favor? Can we get like two or three or four cleaned up? Okay. We need them. Oh, no, actually, you want to you want to mix it up? Let's do that. I mean, I, well, I, I'm okay with that. Is this heavier than these two? Well, this was kind of the surprise. It was supposed to be the like the. So let's see before the surprise. We can go one by one. Right. Let's go. Let's go into this. All so right. is this the first one? Yeah, this is the first one. So what we've got here are two imperial stouts from the Great Divide Brewing Company. Great minds drink alike. Is there? Sorry, I'm distracted because I thought Mott was going to zoom in, and now he went totally. Oh, okay. I'm still on the glass mission. Sorry, Mott. Let it go. Let it go, Mott. <laughs> is he going to zoom? Get back to work. All right, so this is called Yeti? This is called the Yeti. Mm -hmm. They've got a Yeti series, and this is their imperial stout. They've got a chocolate stout, they've got a coffee stout, they've got a, uh, and they've got this one. So this one is, so one of the things we talked about was the things that, you know, the, the beer industry is doing to kind of kick up their game, right? And right. One, of the, one of the cool things that they've done is something you'll be able to relate to. They've been using different kinds of wood to age. You know, you don't typically see beer that's aged in wood. This is this is aged. This one isn't, but this one is. So I want to show you the. So this is the same exact product. Yeah. But this is this is not any aged wood, and this is aged in wood. Correct. All right. Let's. Oh. All right. So. In your words, let's give it a sniffy sniff. Right. 
So I, I get some tar, which I like quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Kind of chocolatey kind of thing going Chocolate on. Chocolatey, a little toffee action. You get the toffee? I get the toffee quite a bit. On the back end? Should we yeah, beat it up? And I get a little... I also get like a little like melted caramel on the back end. You should. That's but good. the tar, I think, is really coming across, which I like. You like the tar. It's dark, you know? Yeah, it's... This is like just just hit the street tar. It's not like yeah. it's not like you're getting your nose right it's up there. You're driving, tar. you're driving around out there, and, and that that it's like George Brett tar. You know, <laughs> they've just laid that tar down. There's right. a little. Do you get so George Brett tar says it's a little pine tar because you're trying right. to get a little pine because this is hoppy. All There's right. some hops in here. All right, taste it. Delightful. I feel like I can eat a burger with this. And you should. Is or that right? steak, yeah, absolutely. So this is, a, this is the big style, Or right? have some chocolate with it or whatever you want. I mean, this Double is, chocolate, right? Because this is huge. This really does, the chocolate really comes through on the back end of the finish here. Like, it really feels like high, bitter chocolate, you know? Yeah, it's like that bitter, dark chocolate absolutely. flavor. and 88% like cocoa count. Or, and then there's a little bit of, you get in the java bean, like you just bit into a java bean on the back I, end, I, too? I get, definitely get the coffee component. Thanks so much, Cameron. Yeah, well, just thank you so, so much. So they actually make, make suggestions on these bottles of what to pair it with. Because this, this brewery, like you said, they're trying to take things to the next level. they got all their awards here, which we don't really care about as much. But they say grilled steaks, strong salty blue cheese, and chocolate is, is what you might want to pair this guy with. So you're liking it? I do. How much is this? That's about $10. For that bottle? Yes, for that bottle. And this? About the same. Got it. And so this is the exact same thing, but wooded? Right. Right, so this is this is oak age. So basically, they just they, there's an extra okay, component right. to so making this. So that's the only real. The it's only a little different difference. color. Right, the only different lot right up here, oak age. Um, so how long in oak? Do you know? That I don't know. Okay, no worries. I'm gonna I'm gonna interview these guys though. I'm starting a new series where I'm interviewing um, smart. Breweries. So um, uh, I've talked to um, wow, the the A V B C and uh, Bear Republic. Oh, I didn't mean to beat it. And so what's that? so you've done those interviews already? Ooh. No, they're they're coming. Is this the first time you're having this? This one? Yeah. It is. I've had this one before though. This is the first time I've had it. Uh, had so it this out. really smells like a two by four. It does. Like hacksaw Jim Duggan's two by four like got someone, stuck directly up your nose. It looks. And I say that often on the show, but this is like really two by four. A pine two by four. Yeah, this is like literally like you go to a construction site mm -hmm. and they're like building a house and you smell the wood. That's what this smells like. Yeah, I'm surprised how piney it smells because. It's the really? hops that are combining with the oak and making it Making piney. that happen. Yeah, because it's not, I mean, this should be oaky smelling, but it's not. No, it's really not. Oh, by it the also way, smells a little skunky. Not like skunked beer. Like, I get a little... Before you taste this one, what would you give this on a scale of A plus to F? What did you think? You know, I need context to that, right? You need context? You know, I need to taste a couple more. Let's do them, and then I'll... In then the we can rate three okay. of them, I can do something. So I give this like an A. I give the other one an A. And you've been scoring on the site. Yeah. This is really yeah. skunky, man. Do you smell it? Yeah, but it's because it's got like a saltiness to it. It smells like fish. A little there's bit. definitely a. Uh, there's a salty component. A salty humidity. There's a there's a humidity to this one that the other one doesn't have. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> Ironically, I think the flavor is dramatically more focused. Yes, it is. Yeah, it tastes like chocolate whiskey to me. I'm getting like a big bourbon component on it. There's some, there's some, uh, now, all right, now I don't know what kind of wine it is, but it's I'm getting traumatic. like a grape, I'm getting like a grape flavor to it, a grapeish something or other. Are you? Let me, hold on, let me, let me think on that, I don't okay. want to bring in my other thought. Not really for me. Okay. That's all right, though. The second wine, even though it has the oak aged in it, is dramatically less full. It feels thinner and focused. It doesn't have as much depth. It's not as full on the palate. As a matter of fact, it's not even close. No. Which is so interesting because you get the reverse play in a lot of wines. And I find that that is the eye opener for me in this tasting. The first beer is dramatically more viscous than the second, which I find fascinating. And I do think the flavor profile on the second is more focused. I agree with I you. I think there's some and... love handles. <laughs> I'm getting my. You want to get in here? I don't know if you're catching it. Really. I got it. I got it. All right. There's a little bit more of a of a love handle um, on the first wine, a beer. 
you know what is interesting about this is that the wood tends to mellow out the flavor and it tends to take a beer that was previously huge which i think this one we could call big not huge yeah. we could call the big. we could call the the um the unoaked one big and then okay. we could call this one sort of mellowed out the same thing happens with the Burton Baton, which is a dogfish head I brought over here. I don't think yeah, I'm going to taste it Yeah, you want to zoom over here? So what, while I'm rinsing for the next beer, why don't you tell us a little bit about these two, that you br the three that you brought here? So I, I, I brought some um, some double IPA examples, too. And what, what basically um, the Burton Baton is uh, is one that the dog that Dogfish Head Brewery does, and that one's, um, that one's aged in wood, too. And it basically takes their giant 90-minute IPA, and, and it, it mellows it out dramatically, and it's so nice and smooth. Um, there's a double IPA there from Dark Horse to compare it to, and then there's a double IPA from uh, from Smutty Nose called Big A. But those are I love Smutty Nose. I do too. They make really good stuff. You know, have you ever been to the Portsmouth Brewery in New Hampshire? I haven't. If you ever get a chance to go there, or if you're when you're in the area, I'll take you there. But that's where I'm thinking about doing a book signing in New Hampshire. So are maybe you? I'll do it next to that area. Yeah, the next book I I've decided that I'm going to go to all these different rogue, like not rogue, but you know, not top 35 cities in America. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited about that for the next book. That would be a pretty interesting And New Hampshire location. is on my, Milwaukee is firm. I decided I'm gonna kick it off in Milwaukee, I have no idea why. And then, um, and then we're gonna go, I, I feel like I have to hit the Carolinas, New Hampshire's on my list, Wyoming feels good to me. So, Topeka, uh, Omaha. I, I've done Omaha yeah, Omaha, you've times. done a few, a few times. Because no, yeah. Omaha's not, it's not backwards anymore. It's big now, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't call, call anything backwards because <laughs> I don't want to get beat up. All right, so. <laughs> I'm from Cleveland, I can call anything backwards. So, White Birch. <laughs> So this is Brilliant. White Birch. Speaking of New Hampshire, Hooks at New Hampshire. This is a, a small microbrew up there that makes some just ridiculous stuff. This one is, this one is a, um, a pretty rare beer, and I wanted to bring this one to you because it's, um, oh, it's bottle 58 out of 154, and I know you like a little barnyard. This is on the only. Nose. There's only 154 of these bottled. That that's for this batch. So um, got it. So there's only 154 of this batch. Bottle. Yeah, I wanted to bring you something special. This one's I called it. Indominus. Indomitus. Indomitus. Yeah, Indomitus. And it is a wild ale, and it and, is a sour. And the owner is Bill Herlickia? That's his name. Herlickia. That's awesome. I like that. He's and so is this done in like a lambic style? It's a wild ale, so it's not... Um, a lambic style is technically spontaneously fermented. Got it. And this is... So, yeah. so if you want to call it a lambic, and even though Sam Adams cheats because they're not spontaneously fermenting... Um, you, you should, you why should really, is Sam Adams allowed to cheat? I don't know why they're allowed to cheat. They just are. They just say lambic on their lambic. They say lambic on their lambic. lambic. And I don't think it's spontaneously fermented because spontaneous but fermentation be happens. I could be. But it happens in Belgium and it's like in places where the where they've got these wild yeasts Ma, you and need to smell awesome, this. awesome the, the bacteria and is, stuff. I mean, this is funky, 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 funky. Oh. <laughs> I haven't had this one what either. What is that song? Funky, funky, funky. funky. You know funky. what I'm talking about? I do know what you're talking about. Oh, this smells vile. I love it. It's got a, a citrus component, though. There's just like this orange peel. You got it too much? Mott's head just went crazy like a bobblehead, so I know I hit it right. Um, there's a cit like an orange peel thing going on, lemony, mm -hmm. but it's definitely there's a mixed in with like... There's a rotten cherry Misha's action diaper. in here. with Yeah, there's definitely... It tastes like... It's, for me, I'm getting rotten cherry and septic tank. You know, I think the cherry is an interesting play, the rotten cherry. It's I, I, it's I love it. Cherry, I though. love it. I mean, it reminds me of a candy, if it was sweet, that I can't think of. Almost like fun dip powder. Like, there, there's a... There is a there is a fun dip component, too. Oh, my God. You just took me back to the Willoughby, Willoughby swim team in, in, the, in the pool back from when I was a kid. These, I it's really get it. Dip. But then it's funky on the back here. By the way, do you remember knock hockey? This would be a good yeah. time to bring it up. Every time I think of swim clubs, I think of knock hockey because I didn't want to swim because I was scared. When we go to swim club, I was like nine now. Swim That's what though. Yes. Okay. Um, AJ can't ride a bike. Just figured I'd say something <laughs> random. Um, and so I didn't want to swim, and I learned how to swim because my sister, who's three years younger than me, took lessons. And then everyone's like, "Oh my God, Liz is swimming!" Literally, my sister takes like her first kind of swim. I run from the arcade. I was playing Commando, best game ever. If you get shot once, you die. That's Realistic. Good. That's why I loved it. I hear it. I'm playing Commando, right? <laughs> Having a great game, totally into it, as you know, I would be focused. I hear it. I'm like, what? I leave the game. 
and I run and I jump in the pool and force myself how to learn to swim because I couldn't fathom that my sister would learn how to swim before me. And so unfortunately that ship had sailed but at least I'm now within five minutes. I literally forced myself how to learn to swim ice cold within like eight minutes and got it like literally was truly swimming that afternoon because I couldn't wrap my head around my sister learning how to swim before me. I'm the least professional guest ever. I'm just cracking up. <laughs> So, all right, let's taste this. So this, it smells terrible, right? But it's that starting said, to grow on me, though. It gets peachy a little bit. Mott, see if it can the, grow on you. The worse it smells, the better it tastes. So are you into time. this style? Or oh, yeah. is this something oh, yeah. that you wanted me to experience because no, I like no. the funky burger and wines? I love, my favorite is one called, uh, from the Avery Brewing Company, called the Pusilus, which is a, a, a sour. It's, it's got a cherry flavor to it, and it's really amazing. I really taste the apples on the palate here. On the mid-palate, there's like this amazing Granny Smith apple, almost like apple baked pie component I get. Extremely sour. Literally like taking an apple, mushing it into like an applesauce, mm -hmm. and then taking the most sour, sour lemons you can get, squeezing it on there, and then taking, making like putting it under like an old 1987 car, like gas pipe, and get like some of that smoky, disgusting, and then eating that. That's what you're getting. Yes, what are you getting? Well, I feel like I got one of those nectarines, so like or, or a white peach that was 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 uh, had like a rotten spot in it, and I got a little bit of the sweetness of it, and then I just bit into that funky area, and um, that except a lot more crisp. So I like that flavor, but I don't like the texture of it when I bite into that peach. Right. But I love this because it it's is fresh so and crisp. crisp. Yeah, I like that. And that's I, a great, that's I'm a great getting the sour, an apple sourness on the back palate. I got a question for you. I know you spit every time, right? Mm -hmm. Do you uh, do you do you put some into like the sort of the third palate before you get mm -hmm. it? Okay, because you got to, right? You got to be able to get because there's like three. You, and I always the swallow lips, a little bit. The mid palate and then the back. I always swallow. A okay, bit. okay. I was wondering. I can drink this You're kind of beer. Yeah. I can drink this kind of beer all day long. I I really like this, and it's very sour, and I could see an enormous amount of the public disliking this style. No, your no? average. Your average bud drinker is not going to drink this. That's the problem. Like people aren't, and and that's one of the problems with beer in general is people aren't willing to really expand their palate. They're not willing to. It's be no different than the average yellow tail or Kendall Jackson wine drinker. I mean, it's the same game, different platform. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's the same thing, and so that's what we're trying to kind of break past, and that's why you're seeing all these sours and uh, oak aging. When did you get really kind of serious about beer? When did I get really serious about beer? Don't um, baloney me. No, I, I mean, seriously, when I started the show is when I got super serious about yep. it. But I've always been like a beer guy, like somebody yep. who's really interested in beer and figuring out like... You'd go and like shop at like the store for like 20, 30 extra minutes, like looking at the back label, asking questions. Yeah, my, my wife hates that. Yeah. She hates that. So I go up, I only go by myself now to do beer shopping because I'll stay in there and just geek out What are out your favorite beer shops? Well, the, the you one... You live in I, Mass, right? Yes. Where? The, I live in, uh, I live in uh, Newton. Newton, yeah. So there's a Marty's there, right? Marty's is the best beer shop. Mm -hmm. So the guys at Marty's and I sat down and talked about which beers I should bring. Nice. And, Say uh, hello for me. They have good wines there, too. I'm a big fan of Marty's. Do they still have their their uh, store on Com Ave? I heard they don't. They don't. Why? Only, they closed it? They closed that one down, and I don't know why. There's actually, um, they've got like a warehouse shop in that same area now, but the one uh, the Newton. one in Newton is, is I'm the mayor on Foursquare, because I go there so thing. much. So, um do you get like free beer because of that? Have you been able to convince them that? You know, I haven't, but um, Nate, if you're watching, Nate. we are going to do that show that we've been talking about, right? Because right? I just mentioned you on Wine Library TV. And that means three people really now are pumped. <laughs> so if you're in the Newton Mass area, please go into uh, Marty's, ask for Nate, tell him you saw him or you heard about him on the show and that he must do the show with Schneider Mark. Mike. Right. Schneider but Mark too. You're Schneider Mark, whoever. <laughs> Yeah, whoever. Um, so, Mike, what else? You're wearing a Longhorns I'm wearing a shirt. Longhorns shirt. This is my Which tribute to Austin. Yep. It, to, to that moment? Yeah, to that. That we, that we shared at South by 09? <laughs> yeah. So I, I have this, this little stupid thing that I, I talk about, which is the Triangle of Austin, which are the three cities that I just plug into and go, and it's Boston, Austin, and Seattle. So I... You know, I try to bring. There a wasn't bit like of a Schmaustin, so it could rhyme. No, there was no Schmaustin or or she Houston's Austin kind of or any no. of that stuff. No, no Triangle of Boston. I don't like Boston very much. I know you don't. Why not? No, no, listen. I love the people and I love the city, but I I despise the Patriots mm -hmm. to such a level that it almost suffocates me. Well, it, it's really hard for me to sit here with all this green around, but yeah. I did find 
I did find this over here, which is fine, which is okay. The Wesley? West Wel the West Welker jersey. No, no, that's a West... No, that's a Wesley Walker. It's not the West Welker jersey. Okay, it's so. Wesley Walker, the original West so, Welker, but Walker, and uh, was an amazing Jets receiver. By the way, blind in one eye. Jets. Blind in one eye. Yeah. Did you think that was a West Welker jersey? I might have thought that. Like a high school West Welker jersey? <laughs> like, what do you think that was? Yeah, that's what I thought. Get the heck out of here. I'm like, I mean, I'm like, I hate Wes Welker. Like, he may be like my second most hated football player. I didn't root for him to be hurt. I'm happy to hear he's coming back and healthy and, and God bless. You never root for injuries, but yeah, you I know he played for the Dolphins. That's they're right. Catch. This guy is a guy I hate. Guy. Dolphins and Patriots. <laughs> Mott, can of, you imagine? What am I thinking Would of you here? ever root for a guy that played for the you know Redskins who I and the with? Eagles? I mean, that's like your worst nightmare. Do you know why I'm confusing him? If with? Reggie White, when he left the Eagles, went to the Redskins for the rest of his career, imagine how much you would hate that player. Or if like Donovan McNabb went to the Redskins. There you go. Thank you so much, Mott, for using a real life example. I, I confused him with Wayne Cribbett for some reason. Wes Welker? Yeah, because they're both well, they, small, small little white guys that do like guys play do way thing. above their head. Welker's a better player. Way than better. Than that's an insult. Relax. Insult uh, to, well, to Wes Welker. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> to that point, while we're gonna riff on it, uh, Mark uh, is uh, is. Uh, <laughs> uh, by the way, that's my favorite moment because everybody's gonna bust your chops. Oh, about I know. That they're slip like, called you Mike, Schneider, Mark. You, Mike, you said listen, you knew him. You said you were friends. <laughs> I know. That's the best part, Mike. Mike, if we're gonna talk about this. There's no way that Josh Elman can come in and put up the same kind of numbers as Welker. It's a complete system play. Welker's a very good player. I liked him a lot You're as a Dolphin. Talking about Edelman now? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, he comes in and gets the same kind of numbers. It's a system play in that slot receiver yep. because Randy Moss gets double teamed, except when they play us because Revis completely shuts down Randy Moss, just saying. Um, but he might not even play this year because he's holding out. That's breaking my heart. But I think Welker's slightly overrated. Because Edelman could come in, six round quarterback converted to a receiver, mm -hmm. and put up the exact same numbers. What do you say about that? Yeah, or, or I mean, or Edelman is, himself or also. Ed, either is that, great. Edelman's that good. Now, we don't know that yet. We got to get a little more data here, but I, I think you're right. No, this, there's, the, the Patriots have always been about the system. They just. But do you think that, they push the system a little far? A little bit. I think little, so I too. I think people understand the system now. That's the problem. No, I don't think they do. Yeah. I just think Belichick has such a huge ego, which three Super Bowls will do that, and mm -hmm. I respect that. Um, yeah. Yes, I, I hate him with all my heart because he stole money from us. You know, he took his million dollar bonus and resigned via fax. Yep. And, for, you know, he's been the Jets head coach twice without ever coaching a game. Do you know that little fun fact? Yeah, yeah, I knew that. Because I've said it so many times. Maybe. Um, do you know I had to endure him in Cleveland, so I did not want him to be... And right, you Patriots. probably were pissed when he began. I was. So are you a Browns fan or no, a Patriot fan? No, the Browns are dead. They're dead. They're the Ravens. Yes, they are. And, and, I, and I despise the Ravens. I also I hate the Ravens except what they did to you guys last year in the playoffs. <sighs> it was one of my favorite things of all time. Thank you, Ravens. And we're going to beat your ass on Monday night to open our new stadium. This that year. was Just terrible. helping all the Baltimore people watching. So, so the quick, quick story is I... Manny Ramirez and I both moved to Boston same time. So I, I, I left that behind. I left Cleveland behind. Basically you and Manny sporting. both. So when Manny was was he traded? No. When Manny signed it as as a free agent with the Red Sox, you were part of that I package. Paved, you I, also well, you paved the way. You were yeah, slightly I paved ahead of him. Yeah, the Slightly ahead of him. So I, he texted you, and you were did. like, "He was like Mike." It, we, we couldn't text back then. Right. So he <laughs> sent you Mike at Schneider Mike at Hotmail dot com back then, and you you know a pigeon came, and you said yes. You know, like the Carrier old like, pigeon. Do you yeah. remember the whole "I like"? Do you like me? Yes or no? Notes. In, <laughs> That's in exactly what school? it was. I do. Did he say should I? Should you know, remember they, they make him like in the footballs? Okay, anyway, completely sidetracked. Great beer show. Hope you guys enjoyed it. You know what to do. Question of the day. Question of the day is, um, what's keeping you from what's keeping you from expanding your beer palette? That's what I want to know. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to jump in, and I don't normally do this, but I'm so comfortable with you, Mark. Uh, what are you actively drinking as your go-to beer? I'm just curious based on that riff we had before. Thanks, Mark. Greg. I appreciate it. <laughs> Good move. You, with a little bit of me and Mark and Greg, we're changing the beer world.